Yo guys, what's up? I'm Justin. I'm here with Richard. We're gonna continue our trade candidates part three. Uh, Richard, what's going on? Not too much. A couple of uh, interesting cases coming up in this next segment. Yes. So we have two nationals and one royals, guys. So you guys are saying, "Oh, it's just a boring old, old video," but you'll be surprised about where where we might consider putting these guys on on their teams. So let's start off with veteran catcher Yvonne Rodriguez. This guy is coming to an age where, I don't know, he starts talking retirement. I mean, this guy's been in the league for like a very, very, very long time. Richard, what team will pick up uh, my one of my favorite catchers, Yvonne Rodriguez? Well, uh, he's due to make $3 million this year. Um, he actually said that he wants to play for a few more years, and he hopes to stay with the Nationals. So I can see, I can see him staying with the Nats. Uh, to help out Wilson Ramos, but uh, you know some teams ring a bell. Uh, like for instance, the the Astros could pursue him with all their catching, um, all their catching uh, problems are in there. And it might be shocking, but even the Boston Red Sox right now they have Jared Saltalamakia, who is um, well terrible uh, to say the least. Did pretty good today, driving in four runs. They do have Veritek as well. But Pudge could help him out. Uh, like I said, like I said, I don't really see it. But um, I can see. I just see him staying with the Nationals at this point in his career. I think that he's kind of has a lot of say in where he wants to go, and I think that will help out Wilson Ramos, the young catcher, um, a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's. I think. I think he's just going to stay in Washington. Yeah, um, maybe I don't really see the Astros going after him, even though his time with the Astros was up and down. I didn't really care for him when he played for the Nationals. But following him, I used to follow him when he played for Detroit. This guy was an all-out beast with Detroit. So I would actually have to say that he could actually stay with the Nationals. I mean, this could probably be the team that he was going to retire with. So, or unless he either decides to go and retire with the Rangers after when he comes to an age. So it could be a candidate for him. So I actually say he could actually stay with Nationals. Next, we have Jason Marquis, a fellow Nationals pitcher. I mean, this guy was terrible. I think it was last year. This guy didn't really even get any wins at all. So I don't know what team will actually want this guy. Richard, who are your candidates for Jason Marquis? Well, he's due to make seven and a half million this year. Uh, last year, like you said, he was two and nine with a six point six zero ERA. Um, again, uh, I really have no idea. Um, I wish I really, I wish I had a team, but and it's not because I, it's not because I really don't know a team that can pick him up. It's because he's almost untradeable. Like there's not a team out there that would want a guy who's coming out of a two and nine six point six zero ERA season. With that's a dude to make seven and a half million. There's just I can't. I don't think if any team would be would would put their club at risk for liabilities such as him. Yeah, I mean it's kind of hard to talk about who actually picked this guy up. So we have to keep our options open with Jason Marquis on this one. Um, next we have Jeff Francis, the ace of the Royals right now. Um, we are throwing this guy in there because the Royals are doing had a hot season, just a hot part of the season in the beginning. Um, maybe they could pick it up, and maybe we actually see a, maybe a better outlook for the Royals' record this year. Richard, why do you see like Jeff Francis is a trade candidate, and what team will actually go and possibly trade for him? Well, he is a trade candidate. Uh, you know, if he has a hot enough start, maybe the can the Royals can get something out of him. But I think he's going to stay with the Royals if he puts up good numbers. You know, the Royals have really had a lot of trouble looking for a good uh, half-decent ace to lead their squad. Right now, he is um, he's uh, he's all in all with a 2.61 ERA. Uh, he's doing really good to start off with the Royals. He's making two million this season. I can see teams that are in need of pitching again. It all goes back to the Yankees. Uh, Yankees, um, you know, maybe the Rockies even try to go back after him. Uh, you know, uh, just a bunch of clubs could go after him because he's so cheap. Um, but I think he's going to end up staying with the Royals all in all. 
Yeah, it could possibly happen. I mean, I can actually see maybe the Rockies going after him. Um, this Royal staff, uh, they don't have the veteran Gil Mesh anymore. Uh, Luke Kochevar, Jeff Francis, Kyle Davies, Bruce Chen, Sean O'Sullivan, all named the starting pitching rotation. So, Bruce Chen, um, not a problem with Bruce Chen. Kyle Davies has, he's very challenging if this guy can actually pitch well. I mean, I don't know much about Kyle Davies at all. I see him have a couple of sh uh, struggling outings. Sean O'Sullivan, I could possibly see Jeff Francis as a trade candidate, but Sean O'Sullivan can also be a trade candidate in the Royals organization. Um, he's coming over from L.A. This is actually his first full season. He was traded very, very, I think it was kind of late and very early in the season for Sean O'Sullivan from the Angels to the Royals. But back to Francis, I think that Francis could possibly stay with the Royals if, the, if he comes out being a strong pitcher for this team. So next we have another race pitcher, a well race pitcher, another race player, um, Jeff Neiman. Richard, you're a race expert. Tell us about your boy Jeff Neiman. Well, Jeff Neiman, um, he's, I think this is his third year starting for the race. Um, he hasn't really been, uh, you know, the greatest pitcher. Um, you know, his first season was really good, 13-6 and six with a 3.94. And his 12 and 8 season with a 4.39, and now he's 0 and 2 and 6.32. Um, you know he's uh, he's not very expensive. He's only making uh, 903 thousand dollars this year. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think the Rays will trade him, but he is a definite trade candidate um, if the Rays decide to just, you know, do an all-out fire sale. Um, and I'm just going to sound really repetitive with the Yankees. Uh, all teams that are really in need of starting pitching could go after him. The Rockies, again, could. Uh, uh, maybe the White Sox. I think the Rays will end up keeping him, unfortunately. Uh, well, not unfortunately. I mean, he's not too bad, but he's just one of those guys where when I watch the Rays, I kind of get nervous. Um, but, uh, yeah, um... I could see the Yankees or the Rockies or the Braves or the White Sox maybe pursuing this guy. But I think he'll end up staying with the Rays. I actually say that Jeff Neiman could possibly go to the Yankees. And I'm also, I also have to throw in my Angels. I mean, uh, I think that the Yankees, since the Yankees are still looking for that pitch rotation, I mean, they're running Bartolo Colon in the rotation. This team has, uh, I think it's a Japanese import pitcher from, uh, I think it was AAA ball. I mean, this guy hasn't been... I don't know exactly who his name is, but I heard about him being called up while Phil Hughes is on the DL. When Phil Hughes comes back, he'll probably be sent down. But if the if the Yankees are supposed to get something going this season, uh, we'll get their pitching going in the bullpen this season. Rafael Soriano, set up role. The guy has been good so far. Boone Logan, David Robertson, um, Jabba Chamberlain. I mean, you, if you just add Jeff Neiman, it'd actually be a pretty decent bullpen. Um, going over to my Angels, I mean, Jeff, Michael Cohen, I think his name was, um, he got sent down, they picked, they sent up, they brought up Reggie Willits for him. Uh, I mean, Jeff Neiman will have a really nice, nice position in the bullpen for the Angels. Uh, Scott Downs, Fernando Rodney's gone. Scott Downs coming back in, uh, Hisanori Takahashi's in there. I'm jotting Jeff Neiman. Jeff Neiman's a nice piece to put in your bullpen, but... It all comes down to what uh, what he what will the team trade for Jeff Neiman. So next we have another race player, another veteran outfielder, Johnny Damon. This guy. Well, we'll just keep the talking to Richard. Richard, you're a race expert. Tell us about Damon and why you think he's going to be a candidate. Well, Damon's out to a really hard start with the race. He actually has. Um before the loss today, he delivered the five game-winning hits. Uh, he delivered five game-winning hits in a row. Um, he uh, he actually left the game today with a bruised ring finger, which, I mean, is, I don't really consider that a cause for concern, but um, on the season right now, he's batting 218, but he has three home runs and 12 RPIs. He had a walk-off home run the other day, and also another in a walk-off home run, uh, I think, three, day, three or four days ago. Um, he's making $5.25 million this year. He's another candidate to be traded at the Rays of a fire sale. There are a lot of teams I could be interested in him. Uh, I could almost say every team 
in the major leagues besides teams that are really full on outfield could be interested in this guy. You know, he's 37, but he's played in, he's played in 140 games since 1990, uh, at least 140 games since 1996. Um, he offers a lot. Uh, he's a DH mainly now, so I might limit him to the AL, but there were a lot of AL teams that could use him. Um, like, uh, for example, the Blue Jays, um, the Indians, uh, the Royals, the, uh, you can maybe even go back to the Tigers, which I really doubt, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of teams that could be pursuing Damon if the Rays decide to become sellers, but if the Rays are contending, they'll stay with the Rays. Yeah, uh, if he contends with the Rays, it's good to be back, he's going to be back with the Rays. Um, like you said, Toronto, uh, I actually say that possibly not with Toronto. I don't know, Rajay Davis is a good outfielder. The guy can steal a lot of bases. So I probably have to say no to Toronto. But I actually have to throw in the Twins. I mean, this guy, even though the Twins have, like, Jason Kubel, I don't know who else they got. But I know they got, who do they have, Richard, in their outfield? I totally forgot. I totally, totally lost my mind out of that. Well, they have uh, Jason Kubel, Michael Kadire could be an outfielder. Um... Who else have they got out there? Oh, Don nice Young. Uh, all those three guys I just mentioned are actually free agents. So, and they also have the Nard Span out there as well. But uh, the Twins, maybe, I can see. But, like I said, they do have three free agents coming up. So, I don't know if mm-hmm. Damon would be a good fit because of that. Yeah. Um, but I really, I, reckon, I can see Damon Pauly with the Twins. So the Twins are kind of falling, falling right now, but I bet they'll bounce back. So there we go, guys. We have our part three done, 11-minute video. I will really apologize. Uh, part four, we'll try to wrap it up. We have four players left on our countdown. Uh, we're going to try to make this a daily thing. So make sure to ch- follow us on our websites and check us out on our YouTube page, which you guys are currently watching. Um, make sure just to follow us on our website. We got a lot of breaking news. Richard has some breaking news. He got trade candidates. Uh, we're covering all the latest news and rumors. Make sure you just follow us on our websites. The link are in my channel. Make sure to follow it. And we'll talk to you guys soon. And have a, a joyful Sunday. Talk to you.